Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Uh, I just got back from a <laughs> pretty long road trip with the Chevrolet Bolt EV down to the LA Auto Show. I actually just posted that video now. Um, but I came back and realized there's a whole lot of stuff uh, that's happened recently, newsworthy, uh, that's you know directly related to the, the Chevrolet Bolt EV, also related to Electrify America behind me. Um, so I, I have a few different videos that I want to shoot while I'm down here, uh, you know, running some errands. So, uh, you know, first, first video though that I want to talk about is uh, GM just sent out a letter uh, to Chevrolet Bolt EV owners letting us know that there will be another uh, update. Now, that update is supposed to remedy one of the major issues with the current update on the Chevrolet Bolt EV, which is that they don't want you parking it indoors overnight, leaving it plugged in and charging while unattended. Right? Those are major issues for a lot of owners. And the new update, essentially what it does is it hard locks out the top 20% of the battery. So uh, you only have 80% of your Chevrolet Bolt EV's battery available to you. But with that comes the ability to now park indoors without restriction, uh, to be able to plug in as far as we know um, and leave it charging without restriction, uh, to drive it down to as low as you feel comfortable on the battery. Previously, they recommended not below uh, 70 miles uh, you know, unless it couldn't be avoided. And uh, so now there's no restriction like that. So essentially what they're saying is we're giving you 80% of your overall uh, battery and range with the ability to do everything that you were doing before. Um, and then with the, you know, one additional thing that it does is this, it, it seems like they're going to be using the data from this update to let them know how to prioritize the remaining Bolt EV owners in terms of battery replacements. Because none of this, uh, despite what some people have been trying to say, despite what some people have been framing it as, none of this is a fix, right? This isn't a fix for the battery. This is interim, uh, you know, essentially a fire mitigation strategy. So the fix is ultimately a replacement battery. So that will happen when it happens. But in the meantime, no, this is just a, a mitigation uh, a strategy and an attempt to provide us with as much of the battery as we can have uh, available to us in the meantime. Now, again, that wasn't a hard lock before on going below 70 miles, they just avoid it if possible and then recharge immediately or as soon as you can after. Um, and then of course the recommendation was don't charge above 90%. Now sure, under their guidance that only left about 60% uh, percent of the total battery and this new one is 80%. But before you still had the option to charge to 100%, though it wasn't recommended, you had the option to discharge to zero percent, though it wasn't recommended. So you really are losing uh, battery range. You're just not losing battery range while staying within GM's guidance. So I have sort of mixed feelings about this. Um, I'm glad to see that they're continuing, uh, you know, to try to improve and prevent further fires because ultimately that's the most important aspect is making sure we don't have fires that nobody gets injured. Uh, but I would have preferred to see something like this be an optional update because for some people having access to that 100% of the battery even just occasionally is super important. Now I haven't posted any of these videos of my road trip uh, yet, but there were numerous occasions where I violated GM's guidance because it made sense for the trip. That was a risk I was willing to take, uh, whether it was charging a little bit over 90% at home or whether it was discharging down to less than 5% battery remaining. Those were active choices I made um, 
Could I have traveled without doing that? Yes, but I wasn't willing to, you know, adjust my trip to meet the needs of the car or the specifically GM's guidance. So like I said, I have mixed feelings about this. Um, the one thing that interests me about this is, and one of the reasons I might get this update is, well, one, to share the experience with the community, but two, if it moves me higher up the priority list to get a new battery, then why not, right? But I mean, part of me secretly wants to see if I can hit 200,000 miles before GM gets me a new battery. Um, but you, you know, whatever, that's all, that's all just a matter of course. Like I said, what's important is seeing a continuation of progress uh, toward that ultimate goal of you know, replacing the batteries and replacing the highest uh, risk batteries first. So I'd love to hear what you think. Have you received this communication? Do you have any questions about it or concerns? I'll try to link to maybe some of the documentation in the description below uh, from the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. Uh, just uh, basically the publications that if you have any specific questions, I would reference the officially published materials um, because I don't want to go into those types of details here. Uh, it just introduces the uh, possibility of error uh, go with the authoritative documents for that sort of thing. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching.